Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today we are discussing a feature that I think would be a massive improvement for the game in terms of its long-term health and just a great improvement overall. A feature that Wargaming seems to have just about forgotten about at this point that was first announced over two years ago, I think almost to the day, and that is cross-server matchmaking, cross-region matchmaking, cross-play, wh whatever you want to call it. You know, the ability for the three servers to play together with one another seamlessly without having to create a separate account on the other servers as you have to do right now. And, well, that is what we are going to be discussing in today's video. Why this could be good for the game, why it may not be so good, and why Wargaming may not have gotten around to it just yet. But let's go ahead and get on into it. So, cross-server matchmaking, as I'll hopefully call it the rest of this video, I might bounce between a bunch of separate names as I do sometimes when I get a little rampy. But anyway, cross-server matchmaking is something that is fairly... I don't want to say standard, but it's a lot more common in today's online gaming world than it was certainly back when I was in high school, you know, growing up on Modern Warfare 2, the, the good one, right, back in the day. And when World of Warships was getting released back in 2014, 2015, while it was getting a little bit more common back then, it certainly wasn't anything, you know, near as normal as it is nowadays. So it's understandable that obviously the game didn't launch with that feature back in the day. But here we are a little over, well, a little under 10 years after the game's release. And with, well, the, I don't want to say like the declining health, but just the, the, the state of the World of Warships player base, because it certainly isn't crashing by any stretch of the imagination if you look at the numbers. I know there's those doomers out there that they see the seasonal trends and like, you know, the player base crashes during the summer as it always does and they shout that the game is dying, but look, lo and behold, we're back in the winter and the player numbers are back up on the North American server as it always does happen. But for sure, obviously, if you look at the general trend, it is a nine-year-old game, right? The numbers are down from the launch. No, no surprise there. And obviously, as the game gets older, it seems that the player base is fairly steady, but not one that's certainly growing by any stretch of the imagination, right? So with a game that's getting older, that is very much slowly losing players, at least the North American server, it would very much make sense to allow the other two servers to, well, connect with the third and all form, you know, one giant server, if you will. That way we can play together with, you know, all the players in the EU server. Just for um, an example, usually in the North American server, there's about 12, 13-ish thousand players on at peak times, whereas on the EU server, there's about 30-ish thousand players on at peak times. And of course, you can top uh, throw the SCA server on top of that. You have a much wider pool of players to choose from, and what this will also do is, since, you know, these are global servers on opposite sides of the planet, you'll have, you know, a, a population that will be covering the downtime of the other server's population. Obviously, you know, over here in North America, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, you aren't exactly getting into queued into matches. That's where, again, the SCA or the EU server would come in and cover up those dead times. So you'd have a larger, a larger player base to choose from. You'd have basically, I would imagine, very little to almost no downtime on the server, so players could get instant matches pretty much 24-7, which is something that uh, Wargaming is obviously concerned about because the matchmaker does prioritize fast matchmaking right now over, you know, more... Um, balanced matchmaking sh shall we say if you're wondering that random match you get where there's five ships on each side and three ships are super ships someone sat in queue for like two or three minutes and matchmaker just said you know what yep yeah, that, that's good enough let's get them out of here before they get to like the three or four or five minute mark so you'd have i would think better matchmaking overall in terms of more quote-unquote balanced games where the ship matching is a little bit more uh a bit more consistent than what we have right now, at least in the North American server. And there's just, you know, the argument I've always made in support of this. I mean, I want to play with you guys over there on the EU server and on the SCA server. Obviously, running a World of Warships YouTube channel, I have a bunch of you guys watching from the other two servers that, unfortunately, beyond the YouTube comment section or the stream chat, we don't ever really get to interact, 
right? And I have friends that play on the EU server that I would, again, very much like to play with, but I don't feel like creating another account on the EU server and grinding it up all the way to what my NA account is right now, because that's a whole hell of a lot of ships, right? That I've grinded out throughout the years. So those are, in my opinion, some of the strongest arguments in favor of cross-server matchmaking. Now, obviously, there are some issues with this. If you don't know, um, each server kind of has its own flavor, and one of the servers is vastly different from the other two. From my understanding, at least, uh, the NA server and the EU server are very close in their general-ish play style um, from what I've read. And then the SCA server is incredibly passive. Almost every time the SCA server gets brought up, it's usually someone commenting on how passive it is, how snipery it is. I mean, we're getting a new Pan-Asian uh, Pan battleship that is literally just like Slava, but Chinese. Like, that's literally what... I don't remember what the name of it is, but that's what it is, basically, right? Um, so that makes sense, knowing that now, obviously. Also, CVs are much more embraced over there shall we say apparently there's a whole lot of them in queue and unlike again on the na server where you know every other game or every two games you might get a cv game unless you're playing you know like tier six in which case unfortunately you get a lot of double cv games um the sca server they, they have fully embraced uh naval aviation shall we say so it's very passive very carrier heavy and that may not be something you want to really mix in with the other two servers that are more of at least what players say they want, you know, more aggressive than that for sure. And even on a lot of those more passive matches over here on the North American server, usually, eventually, the ships do get closer to each other as the match progresses. Now, of course, that might mean the last two minutes of a six-minute match, but in my experience, you know, you do tend to get, you know, those good matches every now and then on the North American server where it is a lot of back and forth and the last half of the game is more, you know, more at that mid to close range. So that could be something that you don't really want to, you know, throw into the mix on the other two servers where at least players say they want more aggressive, more mid-range gameplay than sniperish gameplay, and yet they go into airship escort with a slob of mid. Yeah. Really funny how that works, but anyway, uh, besides that too, obviously there's of course the technical issues. Obviously if you're playing with someone from the other side of the planet, lag is very much going to be a thing. Now, that's where I think World Warships has a bit of a unique advantage because this isn't Call of Duty, it's not CSGO, it's not a Twitch shooter. You don't have to have these cat light reactions in World Warships. You know, the fastest paced class in the game destroyers right what you're doing is like a slideshow in comparison to again games like call of duty and csgo and first person shooters right it's a lot slower paced so i don't think you really have a huge issue with lag spikes there as long as you could keep the ping you know around 100 ish which they actually can do we know this because believe it or not the technology's kind of existed already because if you've ever downloaded the pt server that is one server that everyone is connecting to from across the world located in i don't know where but it's probably on the other side of the planet because of the ping that i have when i'm playing it and yet i don't really have many issues when i'm playing on that server i'm assuming it's somewhere in europe because that's where most of the player base is at right so that would make sense but yeah the pt server when i was even in the uh the test server too with the with the uh cv rework i'm pretty sure that was over there on the other side of the atlantic as well uh because you know i had a very similar ping on that as i did on the pt server and guess what it's perfectly playable and granted, I haven't sunk thousands of matches into the PT server, so I can't really speak in large ways about the meta, but it felt pretty normal when I was playing it. I played it a lot when I was playing on the test server for the CV re rework, and it, I mean, it really did just feel like the normal higher tier meta that you get on the North American server. So maybe that's 
not a huge issue to worry about. Maybe uh, you know I've only played. I, I I would hazard maybe 500 matches on the test server between like you know the old CV rework, the new CV re uh, rework, and when the commander rework came out, and when submarines came out. So I probably got about I don't know. I probably do have like a thousand matches on that bad boy now that I think about it. But yeah, it felt pretty normal so you know maybe that's something that is unwarranted or of course when you dump you know the entire server population together maybe it, it would be but something that you could do that i would imagine could of course negate this uh you could do what well i mean wargaming's competition does if you guys don't know war thunder is cross region and you can simply select what servers you want to play on you want to pay, play on the na server Cool. You want to play on the EU server? Cool. Cool. Just those two? That's awesome. You want to play on the uh, CIS server too, which is the Asian server? Uh, cool. You can play on all three if you want to. Doesn't matter to, to uh, the snail. As long as you're, you know, giving him your money and your time and trying to grind your F-15C when you spawn and, well, your buddies are being slammed by AIM-120s from across the map before you can do anything. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it works, and as far as I've been playing War Thunder, this has been a feature, so I'd like to think Wargaming could certainly figure that out. I know War Thunder has a bigger player base than um, what Warships does for sure, but I mean, like, it works. The technology obviously exists for this to happen, um, but again, you know, who knows how, and I'm not a network guy. I don't pretend to know how the internet fully works. I know the we made, we made a rock think when it came to a computer. I mean, really think about it. We've literally forced a bunch of rocks to think that's what your cpu is and you know the i put a plug in the magic e ethernet cord and it works right so i'm not sure how the networking goes but i'd like to think that wargaming could get something similar to happen now uh why hasn't wargaming really mentioned much about this since october of 2022 well obviously uh 2022 was the same year that wargaming departed belarus and russia and that's obviously you know less studios well, is based out of um, St. Petersburg, which, if you didn't take a geography class or slept through it, is in Russia. And that's the, you know, the studio that created World of Warships. So it's very likely that, obviously, when that split happened and either the talent that stayed or the talent that was taken... Obviously, the full staff didn't, you know, leave with the, with the company leaving... Um, Russia. So that very much could have thrown a monkey wrench into the plans that they had to implement this new technology. Um, obviously, because you have to, you know, designate one of the other wargaming studios to work on World of Warships, and they have to get used to the engine, used to the way that the game works. Then, of course, they still have the task of keeping up this, this constant, um, this, this constant stream of content. Guys, we haven't missed an update since uh that 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 split has happened we have on a regular basis every five weeks gotten an update with regular new never-ending content that that's something to be i mean whatever you think about wargaming that 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 is for sure a work ethic and a schedule that they have maintained for as long as i can remember so that that is to be commended in my opinion um but yeah you know obviously that probably threw a monkey wrench into that plan but Hopefully it'll be a thing that'll happen in the future. And I think, obviously, it will come to a point that they will either have to do that or, you know, the North American server might just be empty. Is that five years away or six years away? I, I don't know. But I think eventually down the road it will happen. But I do think it'll be something that should... Some, I'm sorry, I do think it's something that should happen sooner rather than later because I see it as a huge plus to the game, especially if they can implement a similar server select system as... um as War Thunder has. And oddly enough, it, it has been a thing that's been fairly regular in clan battles. You can mat cross server matchmaking in clan battles. You can play with EU clans, you can play with uh, clans from Asia. And if it's working in clan battles, which you know is ideally the most competitive mode in the game, it should be able to work with random battles, at least from what, you know, I think about the issue and, and from what I've seen, right? Obviously, if it works in the more competitive, you know, the mode where obviously you want to have the best connection possible 
it should be able to work in random battles that's just, you know, we're there for the funsies and to grind out tech lines and stuff. But that is my two cents on that, fellas. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. It's been a time since we uh, have discussed this issue, since obviously it's been a time since Wargaming has said anything about it. But hopefully we'll hear more about it in the future. And again, it's a feature that I do think would be, you know, something good for the game but let me know what you guys think about that in the comments down below hope you guys have a wonderful tuesday wonderful rest of your week hope to catch you guys in the next one <laughs>